Moin Moin und herzlich willkommen zu einer neuen Folge von Großer Freier TV. Ich melde mich hier vom Strand in Goa in Indien. Und wie ihr bestimmt wisst, ist hier in Indien die bargeldlose Agenda doch schon ganz schön vorangeschritten. Und deswegen habe ich euch im Telegram gefragt, ob ihr dazu vielleicht ein paar Interviews sehen wollt. Wir haben 85 Prozent gesagt, sie würden gerne da die Interviews sehen. Das habe ich dann natürlich auch für euch gemacht, dass ich da ein paar Inder befragt habe. Und nicht nur, was das Bargeld angeht, sondern auch, was Corona und was die Zwei-Kind-Politik angeht. So, jetzt habe ich ein paar Inder, die durchs Bild durchlaufen. Das ist es auch, die Inder. Ich habe mich eigentlich gewundert. Ich habe sie gefragt und alle, fast alle haben eigentlich direkt gesagt, ja klar, ich bin dabei. Die wollten auch noch nicht mal wissen, worum das geht. Das habe ich eigentlich in Deutschland nie so erlebt. So. Insofern, hier kommen jetzt die Interviews, alle auf englischer Sprache. Ihr könnt die automatisch auf Deutsch übersetzen lassen. Da gibt es bei YouTube hier so eine Funktion und das Zahnrad. Das ist, wenn ihr ähm, auf, am Computer dran seid, ist das unten rechts. Wenn ihr mobil seid, ist das ähm, oben rechts. Da könnt ihr dann einstellen, automatische Übersetzung auf Deutsch. Das funktioniert sehr gut und ich werde jetzt noch ein zusätzliches Video dazu machen, wo ich die Interviews ein bisschen kommentiere. Do you like to pay in cash, like with bills? The physical um, no, not nowadays. No? No. Have you brought cash on your trip now? No, we do not. Not Nothing at all? No. <laughs> no, I like to pay via UPI. So why do you like to pay with UPI? More easy and convenient. You don't have to carry cash with you all the time. You don't carry cash with you at all? No. No cash at no all? Cash. No, no cash. No cash. Actually, we have stopped paying in cash from last almost one year. One year? Yes, yes. Because all these UPIs are so convenient for us. And wherever we go, we just scan it and pay it. Yeah. So I actually, uh, for this Goa trip, I have carried uh, 50 to 100 rupees only, Indian currency. That's it. No, no. Just the UPI is a great thing that changed into like, you don't have to carry your wallet anymore, right? It's good to just transact. <laughs> I have to carry cash. But the UPI is much more easy and interesting, like being cash around, like taking your wallet everywhere and all. No, 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 online no. Payments over. Why online? Because it's uh, more reliable and you don't have to carry around change all the places. And you know, there are people who comes around with the. What did they They don't take much cash, so we would prefer uh, Google Pay in India. So you haven't brought any cash? No, 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 no. But no, 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 not cash at all. Who has cash here? Well, no, one. just one. Just one, just one, yeah. Usually, you know, when there are small change involved, then I like to pay with my UPI, with my mobile, like PayWave, that kind of a thing. But uh, yeah, for like certain things, like when I'm traveling and all, um, I pay in cash for like hotels and restaurants. So you brought cash over here on your trip? Yes. I'm normally using UPI only. Uh, you brought money with you, like cash with you? No. No? Um, do you know the social scoring system in China? Have you heard about it? No. Uh, I mean, I don't know about the social scoring system of China. In China, when you misbehave or when mm -hmm. you criticize the government, okay, you, okay. Get, you get a bad scoring. Okay. And then you're not allowed to travel, like you're not allowed to spend your money for, for trains, for okay, flights. Okay, got it, got so it. your government is controlling what you're allowed to spend. Okay, okay, so understood. Do you, do you see a risk that a system like this is coming to India? Mm. I think, I think uh, China government has recently killed the democracy because it is something like whatever you there is no right to speech right right to like any press freedom so even China is the only country who is standing last at the table in terms of like press freedom index I, if this ever come to India I don't I think the whole nation is going, going to go against the government for sure but you never know maybe in China it's maybe but that's China but this is India that's yeah. that's the difference that's the difference that's the difference, that's the difference. That's the difference. no I never think like that like India is a f like people need to be free here. they need vacation every month I guess the workload they have and all and there should be no limit on vacations right you have to you have to travel. <laughs> I have no idea if such a system is coming to India, but obviously I do not feel that's a good system. I don't think so. No? No. I, I don't think the uh, constitution of India and the uh, 
as of now the judicial system would allow such a strong dominance or control over individuals lives you don't see a risk that the government is trying to control you with this UPI yes they do have information of everything what you do but it is just that it's more easier and convenient so how do people do it when they when they don't like to pay taxes <laughs> then they do not have any option they have to pay cash actually i really think so ki it can be done in india because in india right now there are some some of the symptoms we can see from last few years like media is something like it is not been meet so much freed as compared to earlier and this process can be done definitely it can be done in our economy how did you like the corona measures in india like the lockdowns and mm -hmm. the restrictions how was it for you they were perfect the government was doing whatever it could and each and every place depending on the risk level of risk everything was controlled by the government in that area it was very tough there were many people in my family who went through this covid so it was very tough i think they were uh, yeah they they did fairly well um for i think the first few months there was a hard lockdown which was enforced pretty uh, you know to a good extent and then i think after a few months they started slowly you know opening up facilities and travels uh, as in how the cases were being controlled so yeah i think uh, all in all uh, the government did a decent enough job they were not very strict like you know they did not over enforce the measures at the same time they had uh, you know certain measures in place to ensure that people are not moving about too freely or there is some accountability they also made sure that they block all the flights from all the countries they they did a pretty good job handling such a huge population in all over the world you know you know india is standing at first right now and even though we don't have as extreme conditions as other countries but up to a point we are doing very good and that's why even we are walking right now without mask like okay look at that even now there are other countries which wear, they are to wear mask and uh, for protection but yeah over here it's pretty chill right now somewhere somewhere i think so like india did well slightly well as compared to other countries what do you think about the corona measures which uh, corona it was a uh, like the lockdowns how how was uh, it for you it was a bad time the thing is i was in my plus 2 classes like high school i was just graduating and we didn't have to give exams the cbse board they didn't conduct board exams that year so we just chilled in our 12th the like the most important time of our college we just chilled relaxed at our home with family spend good time it was overall good but not much good for the world <laughs> so are you vaccinated when on the yes i am vaccinated yes yeah yes yeah i am I are, of course vaccinated <laughs> yes we all yeah, are vaccinated yeah. nobody is not vaccinated no no no, no, no we are you know people who are not vaccinated i uh, know no? i guess from every like, first time they feel scared about that because it's new for all the people right so but after that all i agree to everyone in my family and my social circle is vaccinated as far as i know yes but when i read the numbers like there are 72% in india who are vaccinated like 28% are not vaccinated i have i i talked to many indians i just met one person so do you think the number is wrong or no, where, the numbers where are the people on the countryside or where are the unvaccinated people numbers might be true if you are saying maybe some rural area people they are not vaccinated maybe 1 in 100 do you do you know somebody who's not vaccinated no no i don't think no. i know someone and there should shouldn't be anyone like not vaccinated okay. it's not good for their own health <laughs> because government gave free vaccinations i do not think anybody is fool enough foolish enough not to take it Are you guys vaccinated? Yeah, definitely. Yes, yes, Two, yes. Twice. twice. Are you? Okay. Are you? No, I'm not. <laughs> do, do you know anybody who's not vaccinated? No, no, no. Abey, 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 his father, his father. No, no, no. So, but otherwise, just like the. I will show his father photo. <laughs> <laughs> maybe my knowledge is from my socio-economic background. So maybe in that uh, section of the society, the vaccination rate might have been higher. 
maybe at a lower uh, socioeconomic section of the society it might be lesser because i think those are the ones who are more prone to uh, misinformation and uh, you know false rumors about the side effects of vaccination so certainly i think uh, people who are working in my uh, organization as well like you know the semi skilled workers and unskilled workers they were definitely a lot more reluctant to get vaccinated so maybe uh, overall maybe 70 75% might be a fair figure but probably in my socio economic uh, section of the society definitely it's above 95% um, do, do you have friends who are not vaccinated no i no, don't think so no, no. 100% almost vaccinated. every majority of almost mm. 99% has been mm. but practically speaking because the government had given free vaccinations and if somebody has not taken it then i do not know anybody smarter than that person <laughs> we those who know the importance of that vaccine we took it those who do not know we we cannot force them what do you think about the two child policy in india they have taken some uh, you can say steps for that policies for that uh, so i agree with that basically. you agree yeah. so uh, you don't have children uh, no do we you want children some, yeah but uh, after some time after some time like two or how many children do you want one only just one why not having a big family like five <laughs> children <laughs> because uh, that's good na no? small family happy family previously uh, people did uh, not that much of up to date so they have like four five six children as well but now it's completely changed two child policy i don't think people like think about it anymore but they should like they should control the population i think it's great i think definitely uh, there needs to be certain measures to control the population so encouraging not more than two child is uh, i think a good uh it's a good measure at the same time two child is not as uh dreadful as one child policy which i think china had so i think it's a fair uh, balance between uh allowing uh, people to have flourishing families as well as ensuring uh, population is not overgrowing because i do not know such policies uh because living in india i have always you know got the freedom to do everything even the people before me the generation before me so i'm really shocked like there is a something such a policy is there in place but uh personal opinion uh i am not for such a policy two child policy two child policy right uh, okay. i think so it is good right now our the gen z uh, generations we are growing up in a different we know what is happening around the world but not before that so i would say that at least the upcoming generations is going to take care of the problem so that's what i want to say do you know about the history in india about uh, um, population control in the 60s yeah i think during indira gandhi time or i think afterwards uh, sanjay gandhi time they were trying to uh, control the population measure by sterilization uh, i think uh, yeah i mean i know about it but uh, what about it is your question do you like you see they did it like with very hard measures yes i agree they enforce it with soft soft measures. measures i think yeah i think soft measures is the way to uh, probably go about it probably more awareness and uh, more incentives for keeping it less than 2 but hard measures is sort of a violation of uh, one's personal uh, you know biology and body so that definitely is not welcome but i think softer measures can be enforced more uh, aggressively more uh, widespread awareness more financial incentives for people who are not having more than two no about the forced sterilizations no not not anything about that i don't know okay. why do we need it uh, cuz india's population is growing at a rapid rate and i think uh, our resources are probably not enough to sustain this uh, level of growth two children policy it's good it's yeah. good to have two children they can play together they can grow up together the, if there is only one child then he or she is left alone but when you want to have a big family when you have like four or five children no i will i am against that four and five children in this economy